The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we get out of the box and dive into topics that are sidelined. I look forward to entertain, educate, and inspire. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, donate, and make everybody know about this. Beats by RB Records, a proud sponsor of The Unfiltered by Jade. Shopping assistance Jamaica takes the stress away. Our services include online and local shopping in Jamaica for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, helping you to find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876 919 51 Nine five shopping assistance 2015 at gmail.com. Follow shopping assistance on Instagram at shopping assist ja, at Twitter at shopping assist five, and Facebook at the shopping assistance. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Welcome back to Unfiltered by Jade. Today we have with us here Dr. Barrett Matthews, and he's he's here with us to share about you know why media is important in this day and age, and this is an interesting topic, even based on a documentary that I've watched on Netflix. It's called The Social Dilemma. So um, t- to start off, I want to introduce you to who Dr. Matthews is. So he is a media optimization professional at Media Buzz. He is a three-time author. He is a world civility ambassador and he's a podcaster. So hello, Dr. Matthews, how are you? Hello, Jade, I'm so happy to be here. Definitely, (laughs) it's definitely good to have you here. Oh yeah. And I'm sure we're gonna have an interesting conversation. Of course we will. Definitely. So there are some questions I have here and I want Mm -hmm. to just have conversations about it. And this, you know, I want to first know like what is media? Wow, what is media? Media yes. is a conduit, so to speak, to transfer information to the public, whether mm-hmm. it be a small group or large group, whatever. It's the, the conduit by which we use to transfer that information. So it could be social media, it could be video media, it could be print media, audio media, as we're doing right now. It, it's right. Just, it can be the conduit by which we transfer information to the public. Nice. Um, with this media, uh, looking at media then to know, what are some of the progressions that we have seen? See, now you're going to make me date myself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I started in media in the 1980s. Wow. Yeah, see? He's like, why well, I got to get Man, that reminds me of that Kevin Hart uh, interview he did with Don <laughs> Oh, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> That I'm with Don Cheeto right now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I actually am the same age as him too. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. I, got another, I got another while. <laughs> oh, wow. So, anyway, um, I apologize. When, when I started in media, when I started in media, first of all, there was no such thing as social media. Okay, no interesting. Thing. Social media. There was no Facebook. There was none of that. There wasn't even the internet right. back then. So that tells you uh, one thing, which means also we had print media. Okay. We had radio. We had television, and we had we had film. Yes. But the thing about it was that in those times, if you wanted to be in print media, for instance, if you wanted to have a newspaper newspaper article or magazine article, you had to have someone that found your topic interesting enough to write about it yes. or to take your subject matter and maybe hire you on, you know, as a contractor to do articles and so forth. 
Yes. And right, right now, you can just go type something up and submit it somewhere. You can yes. start your own newspaper. You can start mm-hmm. your own e-magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at television. If you wanted to be on television back then, you had to know a producer. Same with radio. You had to know a producer that thought you were interesting enough to put you on the air. Now, yes. you can start your own television show, a streaming television show, either YouTube or Roku or whatever. Yes. Apple TV. You can actually, your radio show is what we're doing right now. We're doing your podcast. Definitely. Everybody mm-hmm. can do it. And, and it, guess what? It, it is no limitations. There's no censorship and so forth. Mm-hmm. Then you talk about film. You can literally shoot a film with an iPhone now. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, you can. Yeah. It, Everything it, is accessible, it, really. It, it, yes, exactly. And, and see, it's, it's evolved in such a way that it now is accessible to the public. And you don't have to wait on someone. And one of the, the big things that I always see as a problem, and we can talk about this a little bit later as well, is that a lot of people are still, even though they didn't grow up in the era I grew up, they still are stuck in that mindset, though, that you have to wait yes. for someone. Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah, the that's... evolution for me. I mean, when I was in television, we were using tapes. It wasn't a digital age as it is now. Right. So it's more advanced than before. Oh, yeah. Just like yeah, everything yeah. else, it's, it's, it's way more advanced. It's, it's more advanced and, the, and the, accessi- the accessibility is more advanced, too. I mean, yeah, it's, it's more advanced, but it's easier accessible than before. Oh, much more. Yeah. So everybody can have anything. If you want to start a podcast like myself, we can start a podcast. If it is yeah. that we want to do a film, we can make our own film and put it up. We sure can. We don't have to wait for anybody. We don't have to wait for anybody, and that's the difference. What are some of the pros and the cons of media? Uh, well, and it's funny you said that because, as uh, as you mentioned in my intro, I'm a World Civility Ambassador. One of the things that I'm working on right now is an initiative to put all around the world, really, to stop the sensationalism of media and start focusing on putting out good content, positive content, uplifting content. When I worked when I worked in television news, there was an expression. And they still have that expression today that if it bleeds, it leads. Mm-hmm. Meaning the most bloody, gory stories are the ones that are going to be the top news story. And you notice it if you look at the news. It's yes. the top story: people getting killed, people getting stabbed, shot, murdered, explosions, death all over the place. That's the top story. If it bleeds, it leads. And I want to get away from that. Yes, I think that's the one thing we we have gotten into a point now where we look for the sensationalism. If you look, even look at social media, oh. one of the cons, I, yeah, one of the cons <laughs> I see is you get on social media and people will post something about someone dying, and they didn't even die; they just heard a rumor. Yep, and it goes around, so everybody believes that someone is dead and the person is there reading it. Yes. And they, they want to, people are so anxious to be the first one reported instead of being correct. But isn't that what social media does now? So it doesn't just bring um, the truth. It doesn't just bring right. good news. It brings lies. It brings everything. So. Exactly. It, exactly. And that, that's, that's one of the biggest cons about it is that it, it, we, we have, because we have control, People take that opportunity to just, I mean, look, whether we had social media or not, there was always going to be someone that we know that liked to start something. Oh, yes. There's always oh, going yes. to be someone that likes to get a rumor going, that this likes to, even, they, even though they know it's a lie, just to get things going. Yes. And now with social media, we've seen more of that. We see, we've seen people become that. We've seen organizations that do that. I mean, I remember... And I'm not going to mention them by name, but there, oh, was, a, there, was, there mm-hmm. was a news organization that when they first started, that's all they were known for. Now, they've become more reputable now, much more okay. reputable now. But they were they were known for spreading stuff, whether it was true or not. And then they found out whether it's true or not later. And I, I, I just hate that way of, of journalism because I, I, I studied journalism in school. OK. And. I think we've gotten away from journalism and focused on sensationalism. What is the most sensational story we can have? I I worked in television sports for a while. And I remember back when I started in sports, there was an unwritten rule with the reporters and the athletes that, yeah, the athletes may do something, you know, off the field, off the court that was 
wrong or immoral, illegal, whatever. If the reporter knew about it, they didn't report it. Mm. Because that was just that was it. That was their personal life. It was an unwritten rule. You just left it alone. Now, oh no, you don't have a private life. No, you don't. You do not have a private life as as, a, as an athlete, entertainer, whatever. And the news, I shouldn't say news, but the people reporting it seem to have no ethics because they don't care if they damage your whole personal life. They don't. they don't care if they ruin you by doing that. And it's one of those things that I just want to get away from that. That's why I'm focusing on putting together an initiative on that. And it's called Media Monarch because I want everyone to, to know that you can have your own kingdom in the media, but your kingdom have, has to be run with integrity and it has to be able to be built in a certain way so that people will see you as an uplifting type of personality and that your, your work goes out to bring people up and not put people down. So that's one of the things that, I, that I'm working on. But some of the pros of media today, you know, it's just that, that we, that we can create our own. We don't have to wait on other people. If you're a business person, I, I remember myself, for instance, as a speaker, I used to look at people who put on these big speaking events and wonder, wow, how can I get on their stage? How can I present on their stage? And then I said to myself, Barrett, start creating your own stage. Uh -huh. Start start speaking yourself. Start, and then you can invite them to be on your stage and bring their audience with them. But the thing is, you can create your own. You don't have to wait on them. And the same thing applies today with media. You can create your own. And it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. There are people who've gotten famous. There are people who've gotten wealthy. There's people who impacted millions of lives just by creating their own platform and media. And it's, it's been a wonderful thing for a lot of people. Mm hmm. And um, hearing what you say, it resonates with me because I'm even thinking back to, as I said before, the documentary that I saw. Mm -hmm. So I watched it twice. And for me, it, it, it really impacted me in a particular way because it's media that we're dealing with. And I remember someone said in that documentary that media holds or it, it holds our future, basically, mm -hmm. um, because whatever it is that we see on media, it affects our lives daily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether we're cognizant of it or not, it really does affect our life. Yeah. So their, their, their speech to even media causes mental illnesses, mm. you know, that people don't even touch on sometimes because being in the media, and as, as you touched on earlier, um, seeing it destroy your life as an entertainer, as an athlete, whoever yes. you are in the limelight, it causes mental illnesses that the same people who are putting it out don't even care about yeah. what it, what's doing to you. Yeah, think about so all the now, people who are celebrities that have committed suicide over the Exactly. Yeah. And what, what are what what is it that the person who have put it out has done about it? Nothing. Because for them, it's just okay, I'm putting it out there for people can see it's just publicity now that we're thinking about it. We're not thinking about is this right. gonna damage a person and how far is yeah. going too far yeah. while doing it. We speak about media causing depression, it causes anxiety. Exactly. It causes low self-esteem. It causes mm -hmm. negative compensations. It, ca it causes laziness. Yeah, yeah. As you said earlier, where people just want to know, give you things in order for you to, you're not working anymore. No right? research. <laughs> no research is being done. You're getting it. And a point you made, even people putting out things in the news and just reading it and going by it. I've, I've realized that, hey, you have to now do your own research because you're going to see so many things coming at you. But if it is that you're not doing your own research, what you're doing is just gravitating and getting what people are saying to you and you're believing it without trying to figure out if this is true or not. I, rem I remember last week I saw something come up um, and they were talking about a young lady and she's suing her mom and everybody just went off on it until, okay, we said, no, this doesn't sound right. You know, let's do the research. I did the research we found out exactly what was happening. I was like, oh, but this is the case. So why did that? They just had put that as the headline. Right, right. And that's the whole thing. It's, they will create their own narrative of it and not tell you the details, but they want to just, they want to get you, get your attention and they want to get you talking about things because that'll create a bigger firestorm. And it, it's, it, it, yeah, it can be very, very bad, and it needs to be cleaned up and get brought back to what it was supposed to be. Do you think that, I don't know, I'm wondering if it is that it's ever going to be cleaned up? Do you have a thing it can be, it, but see, yeah, let's get real with it. <laughs> this, this is unfiltered, right? So it Definitely. It's about money. Yeah, I know. It's about money. People are paying for those, I mean, 
prime example, the late great Kobe Bryant died uh-huh. in a helicopter crash. People were actually taking pictures of the mutilated, burnt bodies uh-huh. so that they can sell them to newspapers uh-huh. and sell them to TV outlets. That That is... Oh, God, this yeah, is that's, that's, it's, that's, it's sick. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, it, it's sickening. But see, it had. So my point is, it, it can change. Yes, it can change. I honestly believe it can change. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to have have to happen one person at a time, and it can spread. It can spread. I mean, just like the good news gospel, it, it is something that mm-hmm. this has to has to happen one person at a time, and it ha- and it has to spread. There was a there was a book I read, and it was called the Jewish Phenomenon, and it talked about how the Jewish people have built their wealth and over the years and their their, their values and the things that they implemented within their community. Right. And I was talking to a gentleman, a, a friend of mine, a coach of mine, who was in the African American community, and I asked him, I said, God, how can we do this same thing? He gave me the answer, and I didn't like the answer, but he was right. He said, one family at a time. Mm-hmm. Wonderful and the same thing has to happen with, with this in media. If we're going to change it, one person at a time, it's got to change. Now, I'm, I'm going to do my part because I'm working on getting putting together an initiative to start doing that and getting it changed you know, around the world. So I, now, here's the thing about this, Jay. I know I'm not alone. Uh-huh. I know I'm not alone in wanting that. So I just got to find like-minded people who want to join this movement, so to speak, and get people to start changing the way we do media even if we can get how would how think about this imagine one day just one day in the world where all the media outlets said we're going to report nothing but good news just one day well that that would be good wouldn't it that would wouldn't be good it's one day in, in fact that, that would probably day, change the entire order. that would even probably change the entire atmosphere of how the world exactly. looks exactly and the and the way the world looks at each other and sees itself, it, it just exactly. But it's, just, it's it's something that can be done. It's just that we have to just work at it. Work at it. Mm. Mm-hmm. With, with with so many media outlets that we have, is it harder to stand out? Well, I I wouldn't say harder. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't say harder. It, it, I mean, it, it, I think it's the same as it always was. You. You have to do something unique. Whether what is the way you run your outlet, what is the content you put out there, what is the people you attract, what is how you attract those people. Right. You have to do something unique yes. that attracts them. And or that brings them in, or that or that you give to them, or the, the way you run your operation. Something has to be unique that, that makes you stand out. And I don't know that it's harder or not. I, I think that it always is competitive. Yes, but it always has been competitive, and I think that's a great thing. I believe so. Well, when we have some persons then who, let's say, for example, podcasting, mm-hmm. there's so many podcasters out there right now. Yeah, so many podcasts, um, and that's why you have some people who are afraid to be in this media outlet because they're seeing so many persons already in there. So it's gonna be overwhelming and. It's going to be yeah. hard to actually rise ahead because, I mean, you're competing with persons who are doing entertainment. I know and, people and, gravitate and let me, to entertainment. Let me put it to you like this. And for those who are listening who have that mindset, let me put it to you like this. Jay, what is your, what's your favorite television show that you watch? Yeah, it's Law and Order. A part okay. of Law and Order. Yes. That's a great example. Law and Order. Okay. So it's a, it's a TV court legal, legal show. Yes, legal show. So it's a very popular show too, right? Yes, it is. Been on for twenty something years. A long time. <laughs> so does that mean that we should stop making all legal shows now? Definitely not. Definitely not. The same thing applies to people who think there are a lot of podcasts. And guess what? Law and Order was not the first legal show. It won't be the last either. True. And just because a lot of people like it, a lot of people are doing it, there is always room for more. Yes. Because I agree. there are people out there. Who don't like watching Law and Order? True. They may they may like something else that is still a legal show, but it's but different. It's done differently, right? And your audience is your audience, and the same thing applies in podcasting. If you think that just because a lot of people are doing something that you shouldn't do it, then that means you shouldn't drive a car. 
That's right. You know, I've, I've said that. I've said that. That means I've said that. I have said that before. I've said it means I shouldn't drive a car. It means I shouldn't live in a house. Right. You shouldn't. You shouldn't wear pants. I mean, it, it's, wear clothes. <laughs> right. Right. A lot of people are doing it. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So there's always room for more. And with podcasting, I found that there's yes, there are a lot of podcasts. There's over a million podcasts out there. But yes. there's always I, I don't think people understand how many people are actually on the planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my a goodness. Podcasts, that's nothing compared to nothing. the people that are on the earth. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, yeah, I think I, mean, I think it's more, it's more. I always say, listen, if it is that you're gonna compare yourself to what's there, probably shouldn't be there. Because yeah. Um, sure. comparing yourself to oh well I'm not going to do something or I'm not going to be in media because you have a lot of anchors already and you have a lot of um, news reporters already and if it is that that's a mindset that you're going to enter something and don't go in there because all you're going to do is really continue to compare yourself oh I'm not I good enough like you, this person I'm not good yeah, enough like that person and you'll right. never actually um, fulfill the purpose that you want to you are so right on that <laughs> that's 100 percent right you're right i mean if you if you you, you know, if you live your life comparing yourself to other people it's not a way to live your life you're not living no. your life you're trying to live theirs yes and I'm... they already they're already doing that so that that position is already taken so, <laughs> <That's> uh, <funny. laughs> so you can't you can't live their life just live yours and do the best that you can at yours yes definitely how do you use social media effectively well, one, I always say, and I had to learn this the hard way. Pick one form of social media. Okay. Learn it. Master it as to how to get good at reaching people, how to get engagement with people, and then move on to other forms of social media. Right. Now, once you have mastered one, there's the one a lot of people don't want to hear. <laughs> Hire somebody to manage that for you. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hire some you've mastered it now you can show someone what you're doing hire them pay them to do it while you learn another one once you learn that one you can hire that same person or different one to handle both of them but if it if, if you have to do all that then that's taking away your time from doing other things that are productive for yourself it's mm -hmm. someone who likes doing social media but learn what you what you want to do first then show them how and then you can move forward but the thing is i'm a firm believer then someone else gets gets paid to do that. Mm, okay. So if I'm if I'm spending all my time doing it, I'm, I could be doing something else creatively or productively. That's that's um okay. I mean that's a new view on it. <laughs> that's a new that's a new spin on it because normally you would hear you know um, using social media effectively is getting to understand every aspect of it and working at it best but not getting getting the understanding and working at it and then pushing it i mean well not pushing it up higher enough to somebody else do it or well, let one learn a different skill here's so the best, best way, here's the mm -hmm. best way i can explain it jade we can't name one person who's been successful in business who does everything by themselves okay you know at some point you're gonna have to deal uh the book the email myth the michael michael gerber wrote you know you have to get get good at working on your business instead of working in your business wow okay and we spend a lot of time working in our business being the, the coe the chief of everything wow so we, we feel we got to handle everything ourselves like no you you get, learn what you have to do then hire someone who can do it and let them do it let them do that part of it so you can be more productive you can't be productive if you're doing everything mm. and if, if, if you can learn the social media aspect and what you wanted to do then get someone else to take that on and just let them be your social media manager while you focus on doing other things. Nice. That's having, so that now is having, open up yourself to different opportunities. Exactly. Exactly. Because if you got to do everything, you're not going to have time. Very true. Where do you see social media going in the future? Uh, <laughs> uh, loud. Well, look, you, you see Facebook's changing to, to meta. So, yes. so it's a, uh, that's one way, the metaverse, as they put it. I'm still trying to understand it. I'm trying to understand it myself. I don't know. And, but the thing is, it, it's evolving. It's ever evolving. There are different forms of it coming out. 
I mean, one of the things that you know a lot of people caught on in the last year or so was Clubhouse. Clubhouse was a different form of social media. Right. Because you could actually talk to people. You could actually do seminars, do all types of forums on, on Clubhouse and get and attract clients out of it. I, I have one of my coaches. He started doing Clubhouse last year. And if I were to ask him right now, he probably would say over the last year because of Clubhouse, he's probably made another million dollars. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Because he learned how to leverage it. And, th- and that's the other thing about social media. No matter what form it is, you better learn how to leverage it. It's not necessarily to be, quote unquote, social. Ah, you, know, you have yes. to figure, figure out wh- how to leverage that for yourselves to make it so that you know you can benefit from it. Give us, give us some tips on how to do well, one thing is engagement. Uh, okay. the, the best thing, I, I see a lot of people posting some great comments, but they never engage the audience, meaning that you don't put your post with a question. Like if you're, if you're going to post something, ask a question to get them to respond. Hmm. Okay. If someone responds, reach back out to them. You can do it privately. You can do it in on the same thread, but, but privately is always good because that now it shows them even more attention. Right. If you want to take them somewhere else, you're going to have to first engage them to where they feel they can like and trust you. And if they feel that you're engaging with them personally, then they have a better chance of doing business with you because you actually spent the time to reach out to them. To them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and see, a lot of people, and I, I know we've all seen this before, where you may like someone's post and the next thing they do is trying to sell you something. Oh, yes. And my friend, I have a friend, Trevor Otts. Trevor always, he's a marketing and branding wizard. He always says, it's its I am. The first thing you want to do is get their information. That's the I. Then you want to get an action. That's the A. Then you go and get the money. That's the M. I am. Uh-huh. He said, uh-huh. if you get that out of order, you're going to lose 80% of your profits. Yes. Yes. So you first get their information, then get an action, then go, then talk to them about money, about buying something from you. So that's one of the things. A lot of people they go straight for the money, straight and for they, it. They, they they turn you off right away. Right away. I've had too many experiences of that. Hmm. I've had several. Yeah. <laughs> too many experiences of that. Yeah. Like, get to know get, get to know the persons before. One in the last week, they just reached out trying to sell me something. And I'm, I, and sometimes I've taken the time to tell them about it. Like, that's not the way to do it. But, you know, that's the way they were told to do it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, as you said, social media for me, it's really money making. It's not even about educating or putting stuff out there that people can learn from, really. It's you, uh, especially coming up with the microwave um, society. That's what we're living in. And most people just want to just get, get it money. You know, so that's the kind of approach that they'll really use um, in order to to get their social media where they want it to be. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I mean, it, it it's one of those things with, with social media. You're going to have to, like I said, you're going to have to leverage with with in, with engagement with people. But you're also going to have to put out good content. Yes. And. And be be consistent with it. Yes. Ah, see that's a, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like the consistent part. It needs to be reiterated. That consistent part. Yeah, I mean the, the thing is, you can't post once a week and expect to get results. You need to be doing at least at least three to four times a week. At least sometimes three to four times a day. Hmm. Okay. Really? Like, for instance, I, I may do three or four posts a day, but I'll do three, about three to four posts where I really want engagement from per week. Huh. Some of them I put out to just keep people interested in me. Mm-hmm. And then I'll put others where I want engagement. Okay. So that's get... also a way of networking. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just... um. And then I'll follow up with people. So, like, for instance, if I have an event coming up, I, I put posts out to find out who may be interested, not in the event, but who's interested in the topic I'm discussing. Okay. So if they let me know they got interest in the topic I'm discussing, I'll know then when I'm promoting the event, 
And I need to make sure I reach out to those people. Right. Because they've shown an interest in the topic. Yes. And so that way I'll, I'll know, that, you know if they want to come, I can at least invite them. Whether they come or not, it's on them. But at least I've started that going. And yes. I can send them a private message, letting them know, or an email, or ask them, can I have, hey, can I send you an email about an event that, that you might be interested in? Right. And, you know, if I get their permission, now they're, now they're in my email list. Right, right, right. So you'll be able to just send out. Right, right. I like that. Um, so we're at the we're at the closing, we're at the end of um the podcast. What I want you to do is to kind of encourage persons to use the media in a positive way instead of negatively and um allow them to see that changing how we use media will change your perspective on how we even see the world. Well, um <laughs> Why, if I can do a shameless plug, I'm actually going to be doing, I have a make money from media challenge that I have coming up. So people okay. can, uh, people can come in. I'm actually be doing five days of just that. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, if they, you know, they want to learn more about it, they can go to www.makemoneyfrommediachallenge.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's real, real easy. <laughs> so. <laughs> But it, and then that's the thing. It, it's one of those. If you want to really grow in this day and age, right. you're going to have to embrace media. There are yes. a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't like doing this. I don't like doing that." Get over yourself, because <laughs> I'm serious. It, it's you know, my my mother is doing Zoom calls, and she'll be 87 in two weeks. Wow. So you know, it, get over yourself. It's, it, it's, <laughs> this is not about what you like. Learn to like it. There's a lot of things we didn't like at first. We had to learn to like. Yes. Learn to like it because this is the age we're in. Yes. I mean, I, I think about my parents. They're in their late 80s. When they were growing up, they didn't have color televisions. You know, now they now they have four televisions in the house. In fact, you can talk to the TV. Right. And can talk <laughs> to the TV. Right. <laughs> These things evolve. But they yes. didn't say, no, I don't want that TV. They right. just had to learn how to work it. Yes. Yes. So it's the same thing with you. If you have this thing about media, if you have some anxiety about it, that's okay. You can get over the anxiety. Right. You want you know something else about the TV, the, the Zoom and all the social media and all that stuff? It can't do anything to you. Right. It can't it can't cut you, it can't shoot you, it can't it can't do anything to you. You actually have to control it. So I encourage you because that's the way things not are going. That's the thing way things are now. Right. So if, if you haven't figured that out, you're you're, you're well behind. But it's what it's the way things are now. So I right. would encourage everybody to get on the boat, man, and learn more about what we have going on. I mean, if you are a writer, you can, you can write your own book and publish your own book. You can put your own magazines out, your own newsletters, newspapers, all these things. It, I mean, it's so much you can do with media now. Right. And, it, and if you just have to embrace it and say, I'm going to do it. If right. you need help, that's what we're here for. We're here to help right. you with it. But right. you have to take the initiative and say, hey, I want help. Yes. Take the initiative and ask for help. I mean, there, there are endless resources out there that we can find now to get help in certain areas that we want. Mm-hmm. I agree. So let's use those resources and get into social media and use it for positivity. Exactly. Exactly. Just not tearing each other down. We're right. Enough of that. Most definitely. Let's end so, that now. <laughs> please. Please end it. Um, so, Dr. Dr. Marcus, I want you to tell persons where is it and they can find you and listen to your podcast. Well, um, my podcast, you can go to theproductivepodcaster.com. Mm-hmm. Theproductivepodcaster.com. That's my mm-hmm. podcast. I will be starting another one soon called A Call to Action. We're not there yet. I'll be starting another one soon where we will be talking about promoting world civility and getting okay. people to be kind and peaceful to one another all over the world. Right. I, I've interviewed some some world leaders and we're looking forward to getting that moving even further. Um, nice. Also, as I mentioned earlier, if you are interested in learning more about how you can take hold of your own media and start controlling your own media, Right. I'm going to challenge, man. It's a make money from media challenge.com. Make money from media challenge.com. Yeah. And I, I mean, it, it's a great challenge. I just encourage everybody to just learn these things for themselves and stop waiting on someone to invite them to the party. 
That's right. Go to the party yourself. Take a chair and sit at the seat. <laughs> or host the party. Host the party. Right. Right. You don't need to wait on anybody to ask you what you're bringing to the table. Bring right. It to the exactly. Table. That's, the, that's, the, that's the era that we're in right now. Exactly. Sure are. Definitely. So thank you again so much, Dr. Matthews, thank for you. being on the program. I enjoyed our conversation. Me too. Yes, definitely. And thank you guys for listening to Unfiltered by Jade. And we'll be back next week, Tuesday. Thank you.